Welcome back to this morning. In 1953, Derek Bentley, an epileptic, was hanged for a crime he almost certainly did not commit. Today, almost 40 years on, the infamous case is the subject of a new film. It's called Let Him Have It. And it was those fatally ambiguous words, even though he didn't fire the trigger, that were to seal Derek Bentley's fate. But the question is, did he actually say them? He was found guilty of murder and hanged, but one woman has fought loyally to clear his name ever since. It's taken almost 40 years. She's his sister, Iris, and she's with us now. Welcome, Iris. Thank nice you. Nice to see you here. Now, just the, the film Let Him Have It, I mean, you must be glad that it comes out and so patently points out the um, injustice yes. of, of Derek being hanged for a murder which he did not commit. I mean, mm. he did not fire that trigger. And it all seems to hinge on whether or not he did actually say mm. those words. You believe he didn't? No, because we've, had, we've got new evidence now to say he didn't. Christopher Craig came out the woodwork and said. But he said that he did say it in the Old Bailey, but the police didn't want to listen. Because had the police listened, then it would have gone off for Derek and Derek would have been alive today. And in fact, a policeman who was, uh, who was on the roof at the time, on retirement, has come out and said that those words definitely weren't used. Yes, because he was a roof, uh, on the rooftop with Fairfax, and he said that he was the nearest to Derek, and Derek didn't utter a word. The point really being, actually, whether he said them or not, should a 16-year-old boy have been hung for allegedly saying something which led to a, a man pulling the trigger of a gun? Should he have been hung? I mean, that was, was I think that's what exercised the minds of everybody at the mm. time, and, and there was a general public outcry, wasn't there? Yes, um, but Derek was 19. was 19. 19, I beg your pardon, I meant 19. Um, Craig yeah. was 16. Yeah. Um, I think that it was more of revenge, really. I mean, I'm, I'm against killing altogether. I mean, I don't like to see anybody hurt or anyway. Um, and I think it was because a colleague was killed. You know, they couldn't have Craig because he was 16, so they were going to have somebody. Yes. So the stories were made up so that Derek was executed. And that's why in the film, Let Him Have It, that's what hung Derek. Um, but it does, if you watch the film, it shows, you know, the policeman hiding down the side. Well, that was called pain. And uh, I think it's brought all the details out. And I think once people see it, they make up their own mind. I mean, yeah. I went Friday night at the opening, and people were coming out, and they were saying, you know, we'll write letters for you, Iris, the young secretary. You, you, you have seen the film, obviously. Did you see the ending? Because, because yeah. the ending is actually a depiction of your brother being hanged. I get, I've just got a little way past now the condemned cell where he pushes his hand against my mother's against the glass. Um, but I'm in tears by then, because I don't see actors. I just see my mum and dad and my brother. Mm. It is a horrible feeling, but... If it does what I want it to do, then... How old were you? The 20, just 21. Were you actually allowed to sit in the court and watch the trial? No, because if we would be called as witnesses, you have to sit outside. Mm. It was on the last day I got so fed up sitting there, and I said to my parents, I've had enough, I'm going in. And that's when I saw Lord, Lord God I'd put in the headscarf on, as I thought. Yes, I'd never been in court before. Mm. Ludovic Kennedy has, has, has written and spoken quite eloquently about the judge in the case. Mm. And like in so many cases, it's the personality of the judge that often has a very, very real bearing yes. on, on the way things turn out. And he was a very narcissistic old man, wasn't he? Oh, I mean, definitely, that's, that's come yes. out very, very clearly. Who even, who even took, it's, it, is, it is alleged, an almost sexual pleasure yes. in, in handing out... Oh, he had a grin over his face when he was uh, putting the death sentence on Derek. He definitely loved it. Mm. He you loved think if he had a different judge, things might have gone differently? Yes, and I think there have been more women on the jury. I mean, he was recommended to Mercy too, don't forget. Yeah. I don't know where that went. Were, were there not many women on the jury? There wasn't any women. There were no women on the no, jury at no, all? No, I don't think so. So this 19-year-old epileptic boy with, with a, a mental age of what, 11, was 11, it? 11, yes, and an IQ of 66, 66 yes. yes. and whereas a lot of women would have seen that as, that's possibly mm. my son, yes. and might have been more inclined to be merciful. Mm. Do you now feel, I mean, uh, when you look at miscarriages, grave miscarriages of justice that have occurred since Derek, things like the Birmingham Six, whatever, do you feel lastingly angry with the legal establishment, do you think that there should be major changes made? Oh, I should. I think there ought to be a lot of changes made. I think there ought to be more women on the benches, more men, younger men, and people at streetwise, you know, that know what's going on in the street. Whereas these judges, they're so old now, I mean, they, what happens? They get up in the morning, the car takes them to the court, they go home, the baths run for them. They don't know what's going out on out in the street. They haven't a clue, mm. and I think until we get more women on the benches and younger men, mm. I don't think we're going to be very successful in this country. It's a, it's a long time ago. It's, it's 40 years ago, and one can understand why that sense of burning injustice should, should, should stay with you all this time. But when your parents died, you carried on the campaign, you carried on the fight. Do you 
What keeps it? What keeps it uh, uh, burning in your mind? A lot of people would have let it go by now. Um, I think it was the love of my what he'd done, what he'd done to my parents, and the love of my brother. Um, and I think if it would happen to anybody else, I think if they were a caring family, would do the same thing. Um, we made a promise, and my my parents never broke a promise to us. Mm -hmm. If they had to, they it used to explain why. And that's why I broke the promise to Derek or my parents. What is the promise? What is the promise? That we have to carry on until his name was cleared. Mm. But when you say you, you, you love your love your brother, um, you, did you feel very protective towards him when he because mm. of his illness, because of his epilepsy? Well, we it was only a year and ten months between us, mm. so we kind of grew up like twins. You know, mm. where I went, he was there. Um, mm. I could never sort of be on my own. I always protect him because he would never hit back other kids. You know, they'd be kicking him and hitting him around the face, and he'd just go like mm -hmm. that to protect himself. He never hit back. And he never got into any trouble at all. He was a very, very gentle uh, boy until he met Craig. Until we went to Norby and met Craig. Yes. yes. Yeah. And even then, I mean, the the other thing about the evidence is he, w the, the words alleged that he allegedly used were "let him have it, Chris." Mm -hmm. And in fact, he never used to call him Chris, did he? He used, used to, call to call him kiddo. kiddo. Yeah, that's right. Everybody in Norby called him kiddo because he used to go around, you know, like the gangster. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that was his name. When did you last see your brother? Uh, on the 27th of January, 1953, the day before. And that's when he said, cheerio, mum, cheerio, dad, cheerio, sister, I'll see did you tomorrow. He, did he comprehend what was going to happen yeah, to him? Yeah. He did ask dad, did it hurt? Oh, um, God. And how do, you know, my mother looked. How do you answer? We didn't know. What did your father say to him? Um, well, it sort of went round about it, yes. and uh, yes. we sort of changed the subject very quick. Because you could imagine, we're sitting there trying not to cry. I mean, we had lumps in our throats, our stomachs were turning over. Yes. We felt that we were coming to the end, we couldn't do nothing more for him. You must have felt as if you were in, in some kind of uh, huge asylum. Uh, the world had gone mad that this 19-year-old, this IQ of 66, hadn't pulled the trigger, confusing and, evidence, and he was going to die the yeah, next day at the hands of the state. And there was nothing we could do. And nothing you could do, exactly. No. We'd done everything. We, the last time we went to the House of Commons was that night when they said, you know, that he couldn't be debated until he was dead at nine o'clock next morning. Yes. Um, so we just come to the end then. It's clearly still very fresh for you, but you must be very, very pleased that at long last the Home Secretary has ordered a reopening of the case. Oh, very pleased. Do you think it's going to take a long time? Um, well, a lot of people say to me, you know, it must be on the way now because mm. of all the, what, you know, what I've done over the last few weeks mm. and the television, uh, that's helped me a great deal. It's strange it's taken 40 years for the, uh, for the system to, uh, to turn around and admit they may have made a mistake because reading from all the newspaper cuttings and the books that were written at the time, mm. everybody thought that it was a disgrace. Yes. 40 years on, the establishment begins to admit it. Thank you very much. Right, thank we'll you. We'll take a break. We'll see you in three minutes uh, with our family.